Hey guys, Jules here. I am gonna be going with Heather, my good friend, um, on Instagram. And the reason we have bonded, we have many things in common, but the biggest reason we have bonded is because she's on day 118 of her juice fast. I am on day 108. So she is 10 days ahead of me in her juice fasting, uh, magical healing journey. And we happen to, to just get connected through Instagram and say, hey, oh my gosh, you're also this deep into a juice fast. We should do a live. So I'm gonna be bringing her on here today. Um, if you missed that little intro. Yep, she's on day 118 and I am on day 108. I think she's going to be breaking her cleanse in two days, but let's find out from the source and I'll ask her some questions. I want to talk about some things today, including haters, which we both experienced a little bit of. So if you're coming in here to say nasty things, head on out. This chat, this live is about love, healing, and loving one another, uh, having each other's backs and just promoting each other and making each other feel amazing. If you're here to talk about, to talk crap, just see your way to the door. Thank you and goodbye. But I see a lot of amazing people coming in. So, so let's see if Heather's ready. Day 118 of her juice fast. Getting ready to break. Let's see. Her name is Homemade Hippie. I'm in my hotel room, guys. Hey, Candace, so good to see you. Endless kisses for you. In the hotel room, moving to the RV today. So we'll see how Emmy likes that. Emmy is sleeping right now. Mama's got some peace and quiet. There she is, I see she's here. Yep, gonna be talking to her about her long extended juice fast. She's also worked with Dr. Robert Morse. She has pictures with him and everything, guys, so cool. Can't wait to pick her brain and hear more about it. I sent you an invite, homemade hippie. Did you get it? Unable to join. Let's see. Let me try to fix that. I think she's coming in now, guys. Hey. Hi. It's so great to see you. So good you to look, see you. You are absolutely glowing. You look <laughs> like a person who has been juicing for months. I have been. <laughs> so how is yeah, so how, how are you doing <clears throat> i'm doing great i have my juice right here um yeah a lot has been going on so we are like in a hotel right now and well i am here alone got some peace and quiet uh, <laughs> um but yeah we get we're getting an rv today so we're going to be switching over to that. So everything's been crazy, but um, I don't want to break the fast right now because everything is crazy. Yeah. I don't want to like be like, I'm so stressed out. Let's just go get some pizza or something. So yeah, hold on and just juice in until things settle down. What about you? What You're on date. I know... You're on day 118, is that right? Yes, yes, 118. I have two days before I'm at 120. Um, I think I might be breaking my fast on on that 120 days. I'm not sure, for sure, but I think that's what I'm going to end up breaking mine. I heard I saw in your story. I think that sounds like a great number, nice and even. yeah. Yeah, and I feel like it's it doubled my last uh, extended fast, so I feel very, like, 
good about it. And um, yeah, I don't know, just it just feels right. You know, I feel like with my last juice fast, like my body was talking to me and telling me and I feel like that's kind of what's happening right now. So I'm just kind of going to ride the wave and just see what happens. Yeah, all about that intuition. Mm -hmm. I love it. All about that intuition. And it really, really wakes up when you're on a juice fast. Mm -hmm. You just know. Yeah. Yeah, life is crazy. You know, they call it the hero's journey because um, it's definitely not for the weak-minded. But I also feel like, you know, you you get to this place over time by making changes. It's not like I started out and did an extended juice fast. You know, you kind of go at it slow, but build yourself up. And I think, too, um, the more juice fasting you do, the stronger your body becomes. Because last year when I tried to do one, I was 60 days was my max. And I was just really tapped out after that. And now I see this year it's like doubled. So I feel like um, the because like you were talking about earlier, it's like you juice fast and you strip the body down, which is essential when you're detoxing. But then you look forward to the building process, which is that's why I'm craving salads. And I know so that's when I know my body's ready to start building again. Um, and I think it just goes hand in hand with you know, stripping yourself down and then building yourself back up. Yeah, I absolutely want to talk more to you, more with you about that topic too. But um, yeah, congratulations. That's incredible. And I'm just really proud of you, really amazed and excited that like we crossed paths. We were both about to, I think you were over the 100 day mark and I was about to hit and we're like, wait a second, you're you're doing it too? Yeah. Like, wow. Yes. This and doesn't happen so good every for day. you. Like, it's amazing what you're doing too. You're doing it. You have a lot more obstacles in your way right now, and you're still doing it. I was telling my husband, I'm like, wow. I don't know, because we moved from California to Georgia, and that was hard. So to imagine doing that, I was on a juice fast actually right before we left and I cut it short because I was like, I'm not going to drive across the country juice fasting. I just didn't think, I mean, it's not that I didn't think I could do it. I just like didn't know um, if it was the right time for me to do it, you know, with, with everything. Cause there's an emotional component that comes with it too, when you're moving like that. So like hats off to you. Cause I was at that place last year and I could not even fathom going on my juice fast moving like that thanks girl thanks for understanding and it's honestly it's like i feel like it's my superpower because first of all my partner and i are on it together and second of all it's like i feel that uncertainty that you're talking about everything in my life has just changed like we have a new babysitter right now for Emmy that, you know, I'm, I just had watching her today for a couple hours to try to help us out. We haven't had any help with her for a while. Um, I'm trying to embark on a new career change and a new home, new state. Like everything oh, seems like, like what is, you know, happening. where is my stability here? So I actually really am like, clean to the juice like okay maybe I never planned to even go this long I was like you I want to do whatever's right whatever my body says but as we started to go through this extreme stress time I have a tendency to stress eat or to make mistakes with food um, when I'm not in my best mindset and I've enjoyed this so much and Right now, I'm not really, like, to be honest with, with you, I'm not feeling the electricity all the time because I do, part of it is resting and stress relief. And I'm feeling a little stressed and I'm feeling like I'm not getting good sleep as much. So I want to wait until I get that electricity back and I'm at, like, a calm zone where I'm like, ooh, I feel amazing and I know I can easily get there. Um, I do get there a little bit each day, depending on, you know, what I'm doing and listening to music, whatever, that electric feeling that I know you know what yeah. I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And um, somebody was asking about what day we're on. So I was just going to uh, answer that real quick. 
uh, I actually I think it was Danielle or no Kimmy. Uh, so I'm on day one eighteen, and you're on one. She's, she's like ten days behind me, I think, seven days, something like that. Yeah, you got it. One oh eight. That's right. It was like, uh, yeah. So when I found you, uh, it was like a post that you had made. I don't even remember how it went, but I was like, oh, she's on. I was like, oh wow, like, and I remember I was like, I have to send her a message. Um, cause when I, when I see my people, I'm like, hi, Hey, you know, cause you just like, it's a very, it can be a very lonely journey too. Cause a lot of people don't understand. Um, you know, a lot of people frown upon, uh, extended fasting. Um, a lot of people think that you can't nourish your body, that you can't, uh, sustain on just juice. And I think you and I have both proven it's possible, you know, um, that you can totally do it. It's, uh, I know a girl that just finished a 360 day, five day fast. Wow. The doctors told her she was literally have months to live. She had a connective tissue disorder, genetic disease, and they told her she was just going to die. And so she looked to nature to help her because she had no other options. And she went on an extended juice fast. She found Dr. Morris and her life has changed forever. And she beat all the odds and moved to Hawaii so she could just feast on the land, the fruit of the land. And, um, yeah, I just got the chills. It's, it's amazing. But, you know, me too, people, me too. this is the thing I want people to understand. When you drink juice, you're drinking living water. It's living water that's been structured by the plants. When people tell you, oh, you can't sustain on that, those are the same people that are drinking recycled pharmaceutical water, okay? Every day for your hydration, you're drinking recycled water that has been treated at a plant with carcinogenic chemicals. And then they try to filter it out to clean it, but it's it's never clean water. So... Uh, I would say you and I are getting the best hydration possible right now. The best living water that we have available on this planet is from the food that structures it for us because we don't have structured water anymore. And when people begin to understand this, that disease in the body, the root cause of it is always dehydration. And that's what causes acidosis. And when acids win, there's two sides of chemistry, alkaline and acidity. And that's when the body loses. And that's where you get disease from. So um, people need to understand the hero's journey, I think, a little bit better and more in depth because there is so much brainwashing around fruit, number one, uh, because fruit is very different from processed sugar. Processed sugar has been so processed and far removed from its natural elements that it's, it's, it's not recognized by the body anymore. So then it, it becomes a, a, a toxin. So um, that's very different from the readily available fructose that we get from living foods. Um, so anyways, I just had to throw that in there because people battle me all the time about this. And I have not had water in 118 days. Okay, people, no water. And, I, and people are like, oh, how are you alive? How did you do that? But I, I am drinking water. It is, it's the natural water uh, from from. from um, fruits and vegetables and um, a lot of animals get their hydration like this in nature um, you know turtles don't drink any water they drink hydrate I'm losing you a bit, Heather. Hello. You... Are you there? I see you again. Um, I think that your internet's a little spotty. Is it your internet or mine? Oh. Hopefully Heather will come back. <laughs> I know, it froze at the turtles. I want to hear, this is about to be such a good conversation, guys. Try to wait and hold it out. I think she's going to be back soon. So, yeah, Heather was just talking about how we get our best, purest water from our juices. She and I have gone over 100 days barely drinking any juice. 
Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> barely drinking any water, drinking lots and lots of juice. Hopefully she'll come back. Um, but yeah, I have like a sip of water at night to take my adjuncts, my tea, my psyllium husk, my bentonite clay. I use water for that, um, like maybe a sip in the morning. But yeah, she's right. I haven't drank any water either in months. Like you just don't need it. it it's in my watermelon juice. It's the perfect structured water, like she said. Um, so yeah, I was going to ask her next, I think, uh, kind of about haters. And we both had experience. Hi, Yay. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> All good. You froze it, turtles. So if you can okay. bring it back, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, so what I was just saying is that most animals in nature get their hydration from their food. Um, that's why you're not supposed to drink buckets of water during a meal because it's actually really bad for digestion. Um, you're, you're, um, and turtles, they, they don't even drink water. They actually um, hydrate with their food. So, um, and I'm by no means comparing us to turtles. I'm just saying that there, that people think is that, uh oh, is it freezing up again? Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's this other conversation even about the water that we're drinking that is, it's, if you if you did an uh, acidity test on it, you would see that your water is highly acidic. So for someone that's drinking acidic water, I, yeah. I totally have something to say about that. Um, so Heather, I actually had to detox from my water at the beginning of this juice fast. People in the raw community, you know, I've been raw vegan for four years, but it's a journey. You're, you know, like some people in the raw community can tell you things and you're just like, okay, well, is that really for me? I don't know. And you kind of have to figure it out. So I didn't really listen about the uh, distilling of the water. And I was like, okay, well, you know, other people do it, but I can use a water filter. Water filter's just fine. So I was using this water filter and it like, one day I just, I started having this debate with someone on Instagram and they were like, Hey, you know, distilled is the best water. You, you really shouldn't be drinking filtered. So I tested the water. I tested my tap water and it was like 480 parts per million. And the filtered water was almost exactly the same. My filter had gotten so clogged with heavy metals and other things that I was actually drinking poisonous water. Like I was drinking water that was unsafe to drink by the charts like that. You can look up online. The chart said extremely unsafe to drink. And I was very sick the first week of my detox. And I think that it was because, you know, I'm breastfeeding. I drink like a gallon of water a day. So we immediately bought a water distiller. And then the, the stuff left in the water distiller, so I mean, there were, piles, there were piles of like sludge. Yes. Yeah. And then it hardens. And I was like, oh, this has all been inside of me, you know, calcifying my organs. So never again will I ever touch tap water. And I've actually been kind of just like disturbed ever since then. Rightfully so. So yeah, cheers to drinking Good. structured water from produce. It's safe. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think uh, there's just there's a there's just so much misinformation out there. Oh. Sorry, that's my dogs. Um, so yeah, you know, that's unfortunate. There needs to be more education about water in general, and then about living water from fruits and vegetables. But yeah. Cheers to us, though, because we are on the hero's journey, and hopefully the right people will be inspired and resonate with our with our story. And then there's a lot of haters out there. And unfortunately, uh, I don't have time for haters. They deplete my energy, and I feel like you have to pick and choose your battles, you know? There's some people that might genuinely have interest in, and have questions, and then there's other people that just want to attack you because you're living life differently, um, which is fine. You know, everyone's on their own journey, but... Um, 
I'm okay sharing mine out loud if it means that I'll help somebody possibly find the roots to their journey. So yeah, so guys, Heather has kind of been a little beaten up in the past, as I think we all have for trying to share her health journey. And there, I have experienced that myself, especially just recently, yesterday, somebody came into my live chat and they were like, they were like talking about me personally, about my eyes, like her eyes are so big, her eyes are full of hate. And it's like, why? Why are you attacking me? And like, she looks like she's starving, she needs to eat eat you know and I just started to get you know kind of shut down and I I'm like here with you today because we want to share the love we want to share the hero's journey we want to show others that you can self-heal and that you can take back your health and that you're you're powerful I'm not here to hurt anybody or to force somebody to do something they don't want to do and I would never attack somebody else's healing journey so yeah, it's hurtful, and I think that it means that, you know, they just don't understand what we're doing. There's more education to be had, and I'm so glad that we've both risen above that, and we're still here today talking about our story in front of all the people viewing, and we're not afraid to, to continue sharing because if there's just one person out there who needs to hear this today who will change maybe cure cancer or save their own life then then we did the right thing and so i just wanted to talk to you a little bit about that and see what you had to say about that and your journey and your struggles with people who misunderstand this and what it, it really is yeah you know i get a lot of people that are um, that I get a lot of backlash about, you know, protein and um, how you can't possibly drink juice, uh, just juice without dying. And I've proven it time and time again. This is my fifth extended fast. And I never wow. don't drink water during my fast because of John Rose. So he kind of led me to this journey. John Rose is a, is a very educated and he's done i forget how many documented hours of fasting a lot of juice fasting and so you know he he goes into the reasoning as to why you don't drink water um during a juice fast it's because obviously the conversation about the quality of water that you're drinking why would you drink living clean structured water from juice and uh, from fruits and vegetables but then turn around and drink recycled pharmaceutical ridden water it contradicts what you're trying to do, number one. Number two, um, people are going to use that as a crutch when they get hungry. They don't want to spend more money on juice, which you're supposed to drink about a gallon of juice a day at minimum. So when your body's saying, I'm hungry, I want more juice, you're supposed to drink more juice. But a lot of times people will turn to water, and that's why people deteriorate on a juice fast because they're using that as a substitution and they drop weight rather quickly. And they're not getting the nutrients and calories that their body needs. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of misinformation out there about uh, water or juice fasting. I've done a 25-day water fast before, uh, and it's very different than a juice fast. A juice fast, I could go and sustain long periods of time, which I've proven. I can keep a job. I can watch my kids. I can... Uh, be a functioning part of society, whereas with a water fast, it's almost impossible to do those things. You're so weak. You uh, spiritually are topped out. You're a mental, you're not mentally c capable. Um, in my opinion, I think that's why a lot of people go away to water fast. But, um, and again, it's probably about the quality of water that you're drinking. You know, you're not getting high vibrational water that you drink from the fruits and vegetables. So, um, it's very different, but again, you know, it's just misinformation. It was what it boils down to. And, um, people can sit here and judge all day long, but they're not the ones walking this journey. They're not the one doing the hero's journey. They can say you're doing it wrong. They can say, oh, you're going to get sick, but they've never done it. I've done it 60 days. I've done 120 days. I've done it 40 days and I've never gotten sick the opposite happens for me. My health continues to improve and my strength and increases. So I know that those people are just regurgitating what they've been brainwashed to believe. And uh, it's their journey, not mine, right? That's where I got to get to this place where it's like, they have to uncondition themselves. I can't. I can't um, spend all of my energy trying to convince somebody why I'm on mine. 
where I'm on my journey. And that's where I'm at. And I rest in, with peace knowing that I'm touching more lives than I am harming. And uh, I think that's really important is just more being at peace with yourself and knowing that you're sharing your journey because you want to spark that light in someone else. And that's what happened for me is like someone sparked a light, John Rose, and it resonated and it ignited. And this is the result of that, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just so thankful to have you here on my live today because I can say it so much. I can say my truth. I can speak about it all I want, which is what I've been trying to do so much on my journey because I want to help others and I want to re-empower people in today's day and age that think that they need to go ask someone else how to get healthy when they have the power in their own hands. And I am just so thankful to have you here because that shows uh, my followers and I'm going to, if it's okay with you, put it on my YouTube and that shows everybody that it's not just me. It's like you are on the same path and there's lots of us out there. You have specifically studied with Dr. Morris. You have pictures with him on your Instagram. Like you know your stuff and you're a really amazing person. You've done your water fasting. You've self experimented with that. You're not speaking from just some you know youtube video you watched you have experienced it you have studied you know done your work so yeah definitely yeah uh, dr morris is a big advocate for uh you know raw, raw um, juicing um and he talks a great deal about that in his classes and um he has a lot of videos on that as well but you know i think at the end of the day what it comes down to is that we just need to keep, you know, speaking our truth, no matter how many people try to shun us away from that. And here's the thing I was just talking about this morning is that we live in a very fearful society, okay, of, of a society that is afraid to get sick anymore at all. And actually getting sick is a good thing for our body because it triggers detox, cold and flu-like symptoms. And that's why you see so many people get sick in the winter months because uh, cold is naturally alkaline. And that's why you, when you, in the summertime, it's actually, the sun can be a bit too acidic. It's all about that, that yin and yang, that balance in life. And so getting sick is not necessarily a bad thing, but we as a society have been conditioned to believe that it is. And you actually need cold and flu-like symptoms to clean house because we live in a toxic chemical soup. So when people look, I mean, look at everything that you're ingesting, everything that you're putting on your skin, everything has some counts of chemicals. And everyone says, oh, it's just a small amount. But here's the reality. That adds up and it becomes a large amount. And when everything is carcinogenic and all these chemicals are being absorbed by our largest el eliminative organ, which is our skin, our skin is our third kidney, um, what do you think happens? The body is not designed to take in and ingest chemicals the way that we currently do. So when people don't detox, this stuff just collects, you know, and people say, oh, I've never, I, you know, I don't get sick anymore. I don't get sick anymore. It's like, well, is that, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? So these are all things that we have to question. But this, this idea that we can live in a box and sanitize ourselves to death and um, kill the natural uh, scrubbers, that's what I call them because that's what they are that were put here by our creator is kind of insane to me. I look around and I feel like I'm literally living in a modern day matrix because everywhere I go, people are sanitizing themselves. You are, you are. The matrix is real. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, it's so I crazy. Know, I know where they were walking through to a store and they were being sprayed with sanitizer solution. I'm like, that's where we're at. It was society. And I'm like, Nobody looks at the chemicals or the ingredients that are in that sanitizer solution and thinks it doesn't make any sense, you know? Uh, so yeah, that's uh, and I think the more that you start to get in tune with your body and clean house, the more you start to see this truth and you start to really recognize what's going on in the world. And so, um, oh my god, yeah, it becomes clear as day, and you're just like it, it's almost like you have to, uh, uh, there's a point in your detox where it hits you so hard that you actually had like a bit of depression and you're like, oh, dang, the world is really upside down. 
and you know people really don't understand health anymore and you just start to see the sickness everywhere the yeah. sickness that everybody is carrying and the tortured bo bodies they're living in and that's where you just want to start shouting like you said shouting from the rooftops that it doesn't have to be this way we don't have to be we don't oh, most of us don't even know what it feels like to be healthy, to be healthy yes you know, it's, it's also really sad is that people don't look and say, why is cancer the number one killer among our children? Uh, that's genetic. It's just genetic. That's what it is. It's just genetic. That's what I get every time. Here's another it's like component to the conversation that people aren't talking about. When our children get here, they, are, they have been detected with over 200 chemicals, toxins in their cord blood. They're inheriting our toxic load, and to think that they don't is insane because they're hooked up with our lymphatic system. They inherit everything else. Why wouldn't they inherit that? Our parasitic loads, they get that. If we have Lyme, we're infested with Lyme. They are it's passed to our children. Like so, th this I you know, this idea that our children that when they get here, they're not already sick, and then on top of that, we feed them arsenogenic baby food. It's got all kinds of chemicals. It's been, t it's literally been tested. The rice cereal is toxic. It has high levels of arsenic. Uh, I mean, everything is processed. Really, they push a really processed, highly processed diet on our children. Um, the chemical load is big, and um, I don't ever remember it being what it is currently. And so people just don't think about it like that. You know, you just think I'm feeding, I'm nourishing my child. I'm doing what I've been told to do, baby formula, look at the ingredient list. It's terrifying. It is terrifying. Yes. Yeah. So, you know. So I have a friend on here. Um, she's amazing, and she's trying to raise her kids vegan, a lot of raw vegan foods, and she's been attacked multiple times for being, like, a child, abusing her children and not allowing them to eat. Well, it's so crazy that people like you, me, and her are attacked when for for looking at the the nutrients and um, ingredients and saying, "Wow, I just counted fifteen, twenty chemicals that I can't identify in this food. I'm not going to feed it to my child." And then somebody else thinks you're the crazy one, and you're the one who's who's depriving your child. Like take. My mom, for instance, my mom actually thought my daughter was going to die because I wasn't feeding her meat and dairy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but do you know what's in meat and dairy these days? There, there's so much, you know, chemicals, hormones. It's not natural stuff, mom. And it's just so hard to walk this path because everyone is so brainwashed. Yeah, it's a very lonely path. I feel like in the last, I've been, I've really been in my awakening since I got sober. So just a little backstory. Uh, I was a hardcore blackout drinker for 10 years. I was an, I was an alcoholic and I was in a dark place. Uh, I had no respect for my body. Um, I, um, you know, was literally drinking myself to death and, um, I had a lot of demons I wasn't ready to face and you know I turned my life around I got sober and since then I would say I've really been at the height of my awakening because it just kind of progressed from there so you know the diet came three years after uh, I quit all the bad things I used to do like cigarettes like I can't even believe I used to smoke them you know but I was a, like a pack a day smoker and um, so yeah one, once like I was saying like once you get to that place where you just stop all making bad choices and you start to follow this path like it's just like a domino effect you know it kind of just takes hold and takes over and look at your life and you'll think wow it's nothing at all how it was you know uh i can't believe yeah. it but you know we all go through dark times dark spells and we are in the thick of it and i think it's all part of the hero's journey Honestly, because with I mean, you can't appreciate the good stuff if you haven't been through the bad stuff, you know. And you can't help somebody else who's in the darkness right now. You can come to them with open eyes and open arms. You just don't know unless you've been there. And my story, as I 
disclose to you was is very similar. I was like very addicted to pharmaceutical drugs, drank alcohol excessively for over a decade, no self love, didn't even know you could feel good sober. I didn't even know I was seeking and once if you had to get sober, you're like, what would I live for? Yes. Yes. You're like, oh, well, this is so depressing and boring. And you have to go through that phase of after you are an addict, you have to go through that phase of yes, life is dull and boring because I'm responsible now and I'm, I'm aware of everything I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not blacking out and living the wild life, but then once you keep going and you push through and you get to this, this level, which once you start going, you start to feel it, you get addicted, just like a drug, you're like addicted to health. And you're like, Oh, my God, I got to keep going. I feel so good. I feel so amazing. And then that is the biggest thing I keep saying over and over again online to try to help others is that if I could have just known, you can literally get high from health, you can get high and you can stay high all the time. You know, life has its ups and downs, you have your emotions. But even in the sadness, you feel this emotional sadness, which is powerful, part of being human. And it's not like depression like it was before. And you can live in this state of bliss if you learn to nourish your body in the right way and nourish your mind and other practices of self-health and then um, self-help. And it's just incredible and i wish that somebody would have told me that when i was drug seeking um back when i was a teenager like here i mean they probably would have laughed at them but <laughs> here here's some watermelon juice just drink this you're gonna feel amazing but it's like that's so funny yeah we just drink a different kind of cocktail these days you know i was funny i was a bartender for 12 years that's kind of where i picked up my alcoholic habits you know and then, like, last five years of my career, I actually was a sober bartender. And everyone's like, oh, my gosh. Wow. that!" And, uh, I was like, you know, I help so many people get home safely. You know, if I saw someone was really drunk, I would. Mm -hmm. Or if uh, somebody had too much to drink, but they want another shot, I'd pour them a shot of water. They never know the difference when they're so drunk like that, you know. I'm sure bartenders did that to me, too. But, you know you're you're called to be in the places that you don't understand sometimes but like I look back now and I'm like obviously I was there for a reason I feel like the re and I actually had a profound hey guys I lost Heather so I'm trying to pull her back on to say goodbye but I was trying to say that we hold anger in the liver stress in the pancreas and was the other one Oh, parental stress. If you have relationship stress with your mom or your dad in your uterus or your male uh, system. So it's really interesting how we need to take care of up here in order to take care of the, take care of our bodies. We have to take care of our emotional state. So I just came back on here to wrap it up. I was going to see if homemade hippie can join. There she is. Um, and just, you know, say our goodbyes for now. Thanks for all the love, guys. I just want to thank there everybody for joining us. I appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to finish my sentence before I let you go. I have no idea what happened, by the way. Yeah, um, random. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just wanted to say that I was trying to say that. <laughs> Sorry, I got a phone call. I got a phone That's call. Okay. <laughs> okay but uh it's been a pleasure and i'd love to do this again sometime definitely thank you guys have a good one